Welcome to my channel, my name's Josh, and today I'm talking about the infamous SIM swap hack. In 2019, the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, was actually hacked using a SIM swap attack. So today I want to talk about exactly what that is and how it's done. In the last decade, the rise of cybercrimes has increased dramatically, but none more than mobile phone attacks. As of 2020, thousands of attacks were perpetrated against the users of mobile phones, specifically targeting their phone number in order to gain access to their private accounts. This number has increased several thousand percent from 2012 to 2020. The rise of these confidence attacks should be a worrying concern for every person with a phone in their pocket. The recent mass adoption of two-factor authentication, abbreviated as 2FA, is likely one of the major culprits for these attacks, and it has certainly created a new avenue for con artists, scammers, and hackers alike to steal from the public. First, a criminal must gather personal information on their potential victim. They will search through their social networks, do background checks, mini internet searches, and even search databases where companies were hacked and people's personal information was leaked or is being sold on the dark web. After the research is completed, a hacker's job has only just begun. Now that they have gathered the necessary personal information, they can pretend to be the victim. They will then call the victim's mobile phone cellular provider, claiming to be the victim and offering an array of personal information in the hopes they can fool the carrier into thinking they are the real customer and not a scammer. They'll then request a new SIM card activation for the victim's current phone line. Another newer method is requesting a porting authorization code, also called a PAC, to authenticate a new SIM card on a different network using the victim's current phone number. Whatever the method, the end result is the same. Once a hacker gains access to a phone number through a new SIM card activation, they have direct access to any of the victim's accounts online through any website or app that uses two-factor authentication. So if their bank requires two-factor authentication to log in, the hacker is now able to get full access to the victim's financial accounts and even wire transfer money to an untraceable overseas account. Once these transfers are made, they are non-reversible. Many sites today require two-factor authentication in order to make accounts or log in. If your bank or any other online portal that's important to you that you need to keep secure requires this, then that's okay. One extra layer of authentication is always a good thing. The problem is that phone authentication isn't really that secure through text and through calls. And this is due to the inherent problem with the way phone numbers themselves work and attach to your persona. So the best way to handle this is to have two forms of authentication. That would be something like email and phone authentication, or even better would be an app like Authy or Google Authenticator. These apps are local to your actual phone. They have nothing to do with your phone number. You log in with the password and it attaches itself to the hardware of your actual phone or computer. So if anybody ever gains access to your phone number, they will not gain sole access to your accounts and won't be able to change any of your passwords. Another important topic is that you should never put personal information on your social media accounts, especially ones that are public. Even if it's not public though, like if you have a Facebook page, they could still be hacked at some point. You never know if there's gonna be some big global hack. So the best thing that you could do is use a fake birthday and maybe even a pseudonym. So pick a birthday, write it down on a note, and every time you make online accounts that aren't critical, not like a bank obviously, but just something uh, like a Facebook account or an Instagram, go with your fake birthday. That way, if there ever is a mass hack and that information is released, people will have the wrong name and the wrong birthday for you and won't be able to call T-Mobile or whatever and steal your phone number. So that's probably the best way to protect yourself. Phones to hackers really today are as good as gold because we use our phone for everything. We have authenticator apps on it. We have our bank on it, which often has automatic login enabled. So if somebody steals your phone, if they can get into the phone, especially if you don't have a password, they could potentially wire themselves all your money and you'd never see any of that ever again. The other thing too is if somebody steals your phone, let's say somebody mugs you in the street and takes your phone, you can't call the police. It's very similar to like stealing a credit card in the 1980s. Ultimately, the best way to protect yourself is always just going to be using common sense, being wise, having literal backups, as well as cloud backups, as well as protecting yourself against things like SIM swaps. Never rely on one form of authentication. Always have multiple spread out across different accounts, different emails, all with different passwords and logins. 
Thanks a million for watching. Please consider to like and subscribe with bell notifications on so you don't miss any future videos. Have a great day. Bye.